I want to welcome you today to this production uh, by Outside of the Box video on how to make your own biodiesel processor. My name is Flint Holbrook and I is the glycerin or the byproduct. And as I tip it, you see the glycerin all a bad batch. Uh, the soybean oil is a good batch. This is going to start with uh, working our way through a titration of this good oil, which is a uh, single use soybean oil that was used to fry a turkey in Thanksgiving. And we have a lot dirtier, nastier oil. Uh, from a restaurant, cafeteria, um, used oil, that's probably mostly what your feedstock will be if you're doing this. Now, this is this is the important part of the titration. You want to make sure that the fuel, and that is how much grams per liter of sodium hydroxide you would need. Now, for our second, and you'll see as this settles, our fly will settle to the bottom with the byproduct. Some simple questions that you should ask yourself before embarking on a project like we have here. Um, first of all, today we will be working more uh, with a water heater uh, because most people will be a lot easier to get a water heater than a stainless steel. Uh, as you can see, I've also built a processor here. Well, this machine will make about 100 gallons every 24 hours. First of all, we have two indicator lights. This first indicator light is main power. The main power on this machine is on, as you see the light is on. And this second light, uh, here we have our, the kind of the brain of And the it operation. goes down and connects here into the tank. Um, so here we have our mounted our, back. our loads, our pumps, and our heaters are too big to pass through a single little switch. All right, here's our parts that we're going to be using today. I'm just going to start from this side and kind of work my way over. Start this is cutting this box for our switches and for our controller, and uh, come along. So what we're going to do is we don't have any use for these rails, so we're going to remove them. Then we will put our smaller components that we need in. So we're going to start here just by taking out these screws. All right, before we start our processor, we've got to kind of look at our plumbing needs. All right, before we get started with our metal fabrication and working on these tanks and plumbing and electrical, we want to talk about a few safety things that go along with fabrication. We're measuring up this hole here that we've already uh, cut in the top of these tanks. We've got one in each tank. Um, so we're going to mock up our contraption here so we know exactly what fabrication needs to go in. This is our water wash. Our uh, mister unit that we mocked up from Daniel to make our mister's mount. Uh, we are going to put this in the vise and we're going to, uh, to put it together basically and get ready to mount it. So we have our longest nipple in the vise. What it is. And you'd have to do it from the inside, right? So it's just and well, actually, our valve is 24 volts. But the gauger, as you can see, it gives me a number as I slide it back. Measures the Any diameter. Way, we want to mount it so that you it. could have a 10 gallon processing unit and be making uh, right at 300 gallons a day. Let's see, one of these is We would want to plumb this probably as far that way as we can. It actually uses an air tank. It actually holds high enough pressure. I have it pressurized for her. Putting together. Part will connect to our second pump. Um, there will be four connections on this particular piece. That, that other side was the intake, this will be the output of it. Testing our sprinkler valve here. What we have to determine is how this valve. This is another one of the input sides of the pump, the suction side. Uh, this is actually our second pump that we are uh, assembling plumbing for. that it needs to be connected. Uh, thermal couple here show you. This unit actually came with our controller. You want to keep in mind as you do this of how you're going to route your wires. You don't want just wires running everywhere. You want them routed and together. So how I'm going to route mine. Some controllers, you don't necessarily have to use this one, but some controllers have different kind of connectors and screws. For instance, we're going to use pink wire for 120 volt power. Now we're going to run this. Is this wire will this plug, and this plug will provide our little 12 volt power source with its power. Move these. And we will install this. 